So we're on campus today asking people if they had three minutes left to live, what would they say and who would they say it to? I'd probably have to be talking to my mom because of just really what, what she has had to do in my life. And so I would tell her how much I loved her and cared and uh, thanked her f for just the amazing blessing that she has been and instrumental in my, uh, my life and my walk with the Lord. Flip, flip this around real quick if we could. Um, let's say that I had th three minutes left to live and you knew it. Um, what would you say to me? Um, I would briefly see if I could get out of you whether or not you believed in Christ and where you're going. Just to, okay. Just to ensure you're, 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 you're saved, I guess, making sure you were saved. Uh, I, I mean, what, what would you literally say, though? I mean... What, what questions would you ask? What would you, what would you want to know? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your uh, savior and uh, that he died on the cross for your sins? Also, I would ask um, whether or not you thought that your life was meaningful or impactful on others. What, what if I said that, that I didn't believe in Jesus and I didn't think my life was very meaningful? have to go and say that I mean that Jesus is you know the Lord he he's the one that created you so um, I don't know it's kind of like right on topic uh, mm. now I mean so if I've got two and a half two minutes left and you, I mean I don't believe in Jesus my life isn't meaningful I mean, what, what can you say to me in the next two minutes that might make a difference? Um, well, your life has, you know, hasn't gone unnoticed. God really understands who you are and where, uh, where you come from. There's nothing that he doesn't know about you. That uh, uh, These few last minutes of your life are completely um, going to be used for the best possible so it's it's up to you whether or not that you will ask the Lord into your life um, he's you know, the most amazing person I've ever been able to have a relationship with it's minute left isn't a lot of a relationship now is it not entirely no but I mean it's up to the Lord he's the one who judges um, so so if God's gonna judge me what is he gonna judge me on He's going to judge you whether or not you believe in Jesus or him. That's that's it? That's all he's judging me on. So if I just say, hey, yeah, Jesus was a real person a couple thousand years ago, I'm good? No, it's it's the higher, higher aspect of it. You have to uh, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord over your life. And, and if I don't, what's he going to do to me? Well... Uh, in the time we have, the, I can't really go into that, but... Does that seem like a problem to you? To me, personally? I mean, I, I, who am I to say yes or no? Well, but, I mean, does it, I mean just, does it concern you maybe that, you know, if you knew, you know, one of the kids you work with, let's say, Mark, uh, maybe with Young Life, just got hit by a train as, as a friend of mine did when, when I was in high school, you know, that in those last few moments, maybe... You don't know where he's going, and neither does he, and there's nothing you can do about it? Well, I don't think that there's nothing I can do. There's always prayer. You know, the Lord does know. So, I mean, the instrumental um, pivot might be, you know, those last few seconds in his mind. Okay. Mark, what it, where does the gospel come into all this? Um, expand upon that real quick. Well, I, I mean, the gospel is the good news of Jesus. Right. Um, where where does that come into this whole whole situation? I mean, I mean, do, does it even enter into the conversation if you only have three minutes left? Uh, well, it can, or and it cannot. It just depends on whether or not um, the person oh, I lost train of thought had. Uh, hmm. Let's say it one more time. You know, how, how, does the, the, how does the gospel enter in 
maybe in that conversation in those last three minutes of someone's life, if you knew that they weren't a Christian, I mean, you knew it. They told you, hey, I don't believe in Jesus, but I don't know why I need to believe in Jesus, you know, any more than I know why I need to believe in Allah or Buddha. You know, what, what makes Jesus different? And, and can you even answer that question for us, maybe? Mm. I mean, I have it in the back of my mind, but it's very difficult to just say, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been there. So I don't have an answer right now, no. Okay. So, you know, Mark, one of the things that we, we often tell people is, is the gospel that you were raised on and that you believe is the gospel you preach when you're under pressure. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. So do, do you know where the Bible defines the gospel? I mean, I assume you read your Bible on a regular basis. Where does the Bible actually define for us what what the good news is? Um, the end of Matthew, I believe. I think in the the uh, what is it called the the Great Commission. That's it, that's it. So, so the Great Commission is one thing, but the Gospels totally different from the Great Commission. So, so the Gospel we find it in First Corinthians fifteen, right? That Jesus right bore our sins in His body. Right, died, was crucified, and brought back to life three days later, defeating sin, death, the devil. Is that something you've heard before? Yes. Okay. Does that message, is that what you call the core of Christianity, or would you say the core of Christianity is more about a meaningful life, having a productive family maybe? I mean, what is the core of Christianity? It's not constrained to this world. We are not of this world, but in this world, as Jesus had called us to be. So us having a meaningful life, we are just his instruments that he uses here on earth to spread that gospel, like you're saying. So just a hard question for you, and, I've, and, I, and I'm, I hesitate to ask you, but I will. Given that you didn't even know where it was, and, and you're leading in young life, that sort of a thing, do you really think you're being a even starting to spread that gospel to to the kids you work with to to anyone on your campus i, I mean if if you couldn't tell tell a dying man if you can't you know tell us where it is are you really doing the great commission which is to teach people the gospel and then call them to obey it i think that's a good question that you can ask yourself every day you know but uh personally that that's that's good um well yeah but at the same time no because uh, it's a daily struggle that i have to daily like, go against you know the constructs of society to actually put my faith out on the line and then tell people who jesus is mainly i do that through my actions i like to do that structurally through my actions and through my um lesser use of um, verbal, I don't know, just like profanity. I never use profanity. So, so would you say, just, just real quick, would you say that you, you live the gospel out and people just see Jesus in you? Yes. Do you believe that man by nature is good or evil? By nature, good, yes. By, by nature, good? Yeah. Because... Satan was the first sinner, correct? Yes. Through pride. And by pride, he uh, brought in the first lies into the world. And God had made us perfect, in a sense, correct? Whole with him, having that complete relationship back and forth, face to face with God, right? And because of this, we are made good. Because everything that God makes is good. And sin, kind of defined, is taking um, things that God has made in ways and amounts that are not. So, did, you, did you know that the Bible actually defines sin three, three times for us? And I've heard of that, yes. Do you, could you tell us what any of those definitions are? None. So, so I'm, I'm going to just run through them just, just, just real quick, and I want to get back, back to this other point about man. So, so we see in, in 1 John, right, that sin is lawlessness. Right? So sin would be breaking God's law. 
right? So if God says don't steal and you steal, that's, that's sin, right? Now we see in James 4.17, right, that anyone who knows the good he should do and doesn't is sinning. Would you agree with that? Well, if it says in the Bible. Okay, just make sure. And then we see at the end of Romans 14 that anything that isn't from faith is sin. Anything. Give an example. I'd like to- sure, a great example. Let's say that you, you love Jesus, right? And a Buddhist are helping an old lady across the street. You're doing it because Jesus told you to love your neighbor. Right, you you see that you see that, and you say, "I want to love my neighbor because God, you know, was so kind and merciful and forgiving me that I want to be merciful to others." Right, and the Buddha says, "Well, the Buddha told me that this is the right thing to do." The Buddhist isn't acting in faith, right? Because the Buddhist doesn't believe in God. Yeah, he still is an actual. So even if he's doing something good, right, that's sin because he's not doing it via faith in Christ. Would you, does that make sense? It does. So, so let's get back to this issue of man, right? God made Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve sinned. Did Adam's sin affect the rest of mankind? I mean, maybe you've heard of this once before, original sin. Have you heard that term, right? Did, did original sin affect you, me, Tony here, anyone? Yes. That's why we're here right now. So, so... If original sin affected us, are we still are we still born good or are we born not good because of Adam's sin? We are born into sin. So with that, then we like you don't teach your your son or daughter to take a toy from another and bash them on the head, do you? you no, I don't. Them. Exactly. You have to teach them that that is incorrect. So so are they born then good or are they then born bad if you don't have to teach them to do bad things but you have to teach them to do good things i i have a three-year-old and an 18 month old i never taught my three-year-old to lie i never taught my three-year-old to push his brother down he did that all on his own would you say that that's the mark of a good person or the mark of a bad person uh mark of a bad person with very uh little knowledge or so I, I would agree with you i would agree with you that, that it's a bad person so could we say maybe that, that all people are born bad? For the sake of the army argument or just, just personal? For you. Would for you, me? I mean, just after hearing that brief two-second... After hearing that brief two-second analogy, would you feel comfortable saying, yeah, people maybe are born bad? I could. Good. If I, if I said that, that Romans chapter 3 starting in verse 11, says that there's no one who does good, no, not one, no one seeks for God. Right. I remember that. You remember that? Okay. If that's true, is anyone born good knowing that faith is anything, or sin is anything that doesn't come from faith? Yes. So people could be born good? No. no. Okay. So men, then, if they're not born good, they're born evil? Basically bad. Okay. So, so we've just gone from men being born good to now men are born bad after the first initial sin as you said yes after the first initial sin when when do we start sinning as satan has come into our lives and caused us and t- caused us to enter into sin by tricking us into eating e- tricking adam i should say because that is what happened so so when a baby takes his first breath very first breath i've watched both of my children be born it's a beautiful thing when my sons took their first breath, they did not take that breath via faith in Christ. Would that first moment of life then be possible to be defined as sin as you would see it? No. No. So if sin is defined as anything that doesn't come from faith, and they don't take their first breath via faith in Christ. They're too young to understand. Does understanding really matter? Not entirely, no. So if it, if it doesn't matter, Paul, Paul didn't say, hey, anything that doesn't come from faith is sin unless you don't understand what you're doing, right? He said anything that doesn't come from faith, whether you understand it or not. So is it possible, I mean, just possible, that that first breath somebody takes is sin? 
I guess it could be possible, yes. Okay. So so if men are born bad, right? They they're as Ephesians say says children of their you know, children of the devil, right? They're they're at, uh, in enmity with God. They're at war with God. They hate God in their heart. And I, and I would argue that that we can see that given their first breath is sin, that that that's from birth. They're born bad, not good. Right? That means that as we look around here at at the people walking around campus, we could pretty much as Christians with confidence say unless they've put their faith in Jesus Christ and repented of their sin, we have a bunch of evil people walking around us. Would you be comfortable saying that? Yes. Okay. Knowing that, and let's let's go back to this 3 minutes to live situation. If you knew that that man that you saw dying, right? It, maybe it's me, maybe it's a friend, whatever the situation. If you you saw him dying, you know he's evil. You know in his heart he hates God. You, you said before your first question was, did you feel like your life was meaningful? Right? Where does that enter into it now? Hmm. Not entirely sure. Maybe, is it possible that it doesn't enter it in, enter into it anymore? Uh-uh. Because uh, then... Um, all life would be rendered useless, me, un, like not meaningful without Christ. You know. So I, mean, I would say all all life without Christ is meaningless. That our only meaning comes from God. Yeah. Okay. So so I have three minutes to live. If if you the the heart of the Christian message is the gospel, right? I, I mean, you would agree with that. Yes. Okay. Would you? Again. In the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, right? According to the scriptures, we could even we could even go a little bit further there in First Corinthians 15 and say it's the appearance of Christ as a resurrected man appearing to the disciples and then to 500 brothers at one time, and we could we could expand that out and say the gospel is that message. What what would you just just before we get into this this last little bit here, what would you say Jesus did on the cross? He bore all of our sins, everybody past, present, and future, on the cross. And as he died, he, be, he became the sacrifice for all of our sins. Okay, so so he made a way, in, a, in essence, for, uh, for men to be reconciled to God. Right. If you knew someone had three minutes to live and they hadn't been reconciled to God, wouldn't you say it's reasonable or, or even loving to tell them, hey, you have to be reconciled to God? Because if you don't, if they and, and maybe you don't say this, but you know, if they don't, it's going to be bad, yeah. and you and and you don't want that, right? That's completely bad. We don't want no. Okay, so let's look. Let's look out here again. There's not as many people walking around, but if those guys over there um, aren't reconciled to Christ, we don't know when they're going to die. You know, a person dies every two seconds around the world. They could be due in five minutes. One could just drop dead right now. Would it be the most loving thing for you to go talk to them and say, hey, here's how you can be reconciled to God because you don't know when they're going to die? Yeah, that would be. So how often would you say right now you're doing that? Normally I, I, I earn the right to be heard first. Okay, so if Jesus told you, go into all the world, make disciples teach them to obey all that I commanded them, baptizing them in my name. Do you need to earn the right or has your king commanded you to do that? He's commanded me, but it's, they, I mean, people are more generally going to listen to somebody that they uh, have given the respect to listen to. Okay. Does that, in the three, in that three minutes to live situation, they, just going, just be looking for the for the way out, you know? That. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's probably their last bet. They don't know whether or not it'll be true or not, but through that, their faith may show that they will enter in the kingdom. Okay. So let's let's go back to, to what you said earlier, that you try to not use so many words, but to, to let people see your life and to see yeah, Jesus through that. Mainly because I don't have, like, 
the infinite amount of time to stop exactly what I'm doing all of the time to talk to everybody. Do you have time some of the time? Yes. Okay. So, so if, if man is evil, right, we're going back to this now, right? He doesn't love God. He hates God, right? Now, first Corinthians also tells us that, that the natural man doesn't discern spiritual things. Are you familiar with that verse? Yeah. That section? They have to be, um, they basically have to enter into, into spiritual oneness with Christ to be able to understand that. Yeah. God has to illuminate them. So, so if you're walking around campus here, right, and you're living Jesus and Jesus is in you and, and Tony and I see that and, and we're Christians and we say, man, we really, we really see Jesus in Mark right now. Will the man who's evil hates God, maybe is, and most likely is suppressing the truth of God and unrighteousness in his heart and is spiritually blind, be able to see Jesus living in you, knowing what first Corinthians says that they cannot discern spiritual things. No, he can't, but he will see a happier person Okay, you may normally see. Okay, so if, if he can't see Jesus in you and you're not using words to tell him about Jesus and we agree that if they die, it's going to be bad. It, through, through outside action, I guess he would, from the, from the outside in, looking in, would think, what, what's so different about this person? And that may spark him to ask me, but I, I don't know. But that shouldn't be uh, the only way. I mean, I could just so easily just talk to him. Do you, th do you think, knowing the Great Commission, that Jesus is really calling us to, to live in such a way that people will just ask us? Or do you think that it's more Jesus is commanding us to tell people? as we go about. So as you're walking around campus, maybe your job is to hand just a gospel tract to somebody, right? I would say the latter, yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, it sounds like a, a kind of a big switch from where we started. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? <laughs> Very big. Okay, so, so just, just a couple of last points here. Where do you see, the, what, what's the purpose of God's law? Right, you, I mean, you've read the Old Testament, you know God gave a law to Israel. Right, and that, that there's Ten Commandments. Yeah. What's... That's it, correct? Yes, yes. And What's... Jesus come to change? Not necessarily change, but to... Um, I can't find the right word. Fulfill? Yes, fulfill the law. At the same time, he's, you know, changing everybody's sight and, like, the, the way society was at the time because of the Pharisees. He's just completely turning the world upside down with, from that law. Yeah, and so, so Jesus has, right, like there's this law and everybody has it, right? And, and Paul tells us in, in Romans that, that, specifically chapter 7, that if it weren't for the law, he wouldn't know what sin was, right? That the law brings knowledge of sin, right? So, so law, maybe, maybe we could say it this way, law allows the wicked man to God's law to, to, to see to see sin right and wrong yeah okay so when you're when you're letting someone see your life are they seeing God's law which tells them they don't measure up to God's standard but I don't even measure up to God's standard none of us do that's the point that's why we need a Savior. Savior, because he needs to save us from our sins. Be because Exactly, because we are separated from God. We, we have earned hell, so to speak. We've earned death because of our sin. Right? right? So, so if we're going up to people and we're just saying, hey, you know, Jesus, Jesus can be your Lord and be your, be your Savior. Do you think that the natural man, again, who's spiritually blind, really understands or, or even sees why he needs a Savior without having that that mirror. Remember Martin Luther, Protestant Reformation? Okay. He said that the law was a mirror, a curb, and a guide. Okay. A mirror, a curb, and a guide. He, he you know, the law can be put up here, right? If we were to say, okay, the law says, uh, thou shall not steal. Have you ever stolen? Yes. So have I. Okay. <laughs> we know that we have fallen short of God's standard and that we now are in trouble with God, the judge, because we've broken the law. Right? Does, 
so, so if you were to just walk around and let people see Jesus in you and say, hey, Jesus needs to be your savior and you can have a happy life like me, are they really seeing the truth there? No. They're not, they're not seeing their sin, their wickedness before God. Don't you think then, given that, it might be necessary to explain the law to them and then give that good news of grace in the gospel? Yeah. Okay. So, so here's, here's what I'd ask you, to, you know, as you go about, you know, doing your young life stuff, walking around campus, keep that in mind. You know, as you're talking to people, use that law that God gave us, right? You know, call people then via that law to repent and believe in Jesus Christ, right? Because they'll, once, once they understand that law, once, I mean, you remember, once you understood, hey, I've sinned against a holy God and I'm in trouble, I'm in big trouble. It's only then that, that you even have a desire for someone to save you from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Be- right. Yeah. Becoming aware of the problem to solve the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, I really appreciate your time and stopping to talk with us today. Um, I, I hope you have a great day, man.